Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. First off, a huge shout out to all my new patrons. That is super unexpected. For anyone new to the channel, you know that I did a little bit of 3D modeling here and there, but I kind of tripped and fell face first, and now I'm putting out just tons of stuff on the Patreon over there. So that's probably what that is. People who wanted models and they really don't care about these videos. Anywho, it's challenge time over on the TCU Discord again. This one was to make something based on concept art. I have no idea who drew this because I found it from like five different sources, so if this is your art, it's awesome, and I'm going to do my best to copy it. First thing we're going to do is take a big old dowel and squish some foam. You can see this foam is already rolled up because I already did that. Then you can wrap it around the dowel and slide it off and it'll stay more or less rolled. Then you can sort of just squish it into whatever thickness you want. Once you've got the thickness you want, you can go ahead and glue it there and then cut off the excess. So this roll of foam is just the tower portion of this. We need a whole bunch of rock and the best way I can think to do that is to stack a whole bunch of EPS. That is the crumbly stuff that comes apart real easy. And I'm going to stack it on a 2 inch thick slab of XPS to use as a nice sturdy base. My tower section turned out to be about the same size as this jar so I'll just use that to make an indent and then I can cut it out. Now you could try and cut it out with a knife like this, but that's not super effective and possibly a little bit dangerous. What works a lot better is if you take a pipe, like a PVC pipe or something, sharpen up the edge of it, and then you can just jam it straight in there like a giant hole cutter. So now I just took a sharpie and drew on the edge of the foam more or less where I wanted it to be cut out now that I knew where the tower was going to sit. There's no real scientific explanation here, just sort of cut stuff away until it looks right. Started out with the biggest chunks that I knew were definitely going to come away first, and then cut away more as I needed to. It's always easier to cut more away than it is to try and put some back. Also, if you have a hot wire cutter that's wide enough to get in there and cut this big of a chunk of stuff, that would definitely be a lot cleaner than what I'm doing here. And then this right here is what I love so much about EPS. It is super easy to carve. I know it's kind of hard to see what's going on because the camera got washed out, but uh, you can use a knife, you can use a scraper, you can use your fingernails, it'll just shred into little pieces. So once you're done giving your better half a heart attack, go ahead and grab a shop vac and clean all this mess up. Those top layers peeled off, I'm guessing I probably didn't get enough glue on there. I wanted to be kind of careful because Super 77 actually can melt EPS, but it's not a problem, we'll just hot glue it down. Now we can figure out where the hole is going to be, and cut that out. Since the hole in the artwork appears to be broken out, you don't have to be too careful here. Then I just traced where the uh, foam is covering the tower, because I don't need to put bricks on that part. And then went through and put all the bricks in by hand. At this point I thought it needed a bit more trimming. I ended up never actually getting that one part on the left of the tower small enough, but you gotta make some leeway for reality here. Then I just went around and tried to get more of the uh, kind of little shelves and stuff that's on the artwork. Just a lot of tinkering with it until you get something you like. I also didn't want to have to paint the entire inside of this tower black, so I just cut a little piece of uh, ready board and stuck it in there behind the hole. And I did the same thing with the topper piece. Alright, so to put the details on the tower here, I just cut some ready board into more or less square kind of sticks. And just glue them right on there. Once you get all those on there, you can trim off the excess and put the trimming around the top. Kind of hard to tell what it was, it's just larger bricks, so that's pretty much what I glued on there. Then for those little arches in between each of the upright things, you can take a piece of those sticks you were using and then smash them flat so that they'll bend without breaking and then glue them in place. I realized I could have used one long stick and tried to bend it, but then that wouldn't have really worked very well because the tower is round, so then trying to glue the long straights to the thing with the bent and just too many angles. Easier to do it this way. Now I am going to cover the tower itself in black paint and Mod Podge to seal it up because I do not want that foam to melt and I do want the EPS to melt a little bit. Those other rocks sitting on there that already have paint on them are from an old project. This is completely unnecessary. You could use EPS or anything else you want to get the rounded shapes, but I'm always looking for ways to cannibalize my old builds, so I'm gonna use those. 
I also forgot to pencil in the detail in those uprights, but that's not a problem. You can just go ahead and go in with an X-Acto and cut some, you know, brick lines in there. All right, so now I'm going to go out and spray paint all this with some black and some gray. There we go. You can see that it has melted the foam a little bit, give it a better texture. And now that it's not white, the camera can actually see what's happening. There are some pretty big gaps in between the EPS and the rocks that I glued on it though. So I'm going to make some toilet paper mache. That's just Mod Podge, water, a little bit of paint, and toilet paper. Mix it all up and just stuff it in all the little cracks. This does take a long time to dry, about a full day, but when it is dry, it is rock solid. I really could have actually used that to cover the entire piece instead of doing what I'm going to do next, but um, I kind of like this, how it worked out, because you have a bunch of different textures this way. So now that that's all dry, I need to go through and cover the rest of this foam. I'm going to cover that with a mix of joint compound, Mod Podge, and paint. It's about 50-50 on the glue and the joint compound and just enough paint to sort of tint it. Mostly because this joint compound will dry white and I don't want it to. Just go through and smear it on pretty much everything. All the rocks anyway, not the tower. Then you can take a stiff stencil brush and go ahead and poke it into all the little cracks and crevices you missed. And you can also use that brush to make a texture. Once that was all dry, I went through with some more black paint and Mod Podge and covered any little spots I could see that were still the white EPS foam underneath. And now it's time to spray paint it again. I'm going to spray paint the whole thing first with black and then from pretty much all sides but not spraying up underneath with gray and then from a higher angle with the tan and then a light dusting with the off-white. Kind of hard to see that anything actually happened there, but that's the base coat. And now I can go through and actually paint this thing. Just using a big makeup brush from the dollar store here. Now putting the darker gray down, uh, pretty much in the cracks and crevices, maybe a little here and there just to kind of break up the colors. Then I go through with the lighter gray and hit all of the high spots. Don't forget to get the tower while you're doing that. And try to keep brushing in a downward motion if at all possible. Now I'm going through with a stiffer brush using antique white to pretty much just sort of edge highlight. It's almost a dry brush, not quite. Just brightening up all the edges and anything that's on top. Give that about 10 minutes or so to dry up some and then you can seal it up with some hairspray. That dries in 20 seconds and then you can blackwash it. You can go as heavy or as light as you want on the black wash. I'm using the airbrush because I just want to hit like the deeper crevices. I don't really want to darken the whole thing, except for the tower. The tower is really dark. Set up a fan and let that dry. And now we can put the snow on it. So completely drench this thing in hairspray. Take some baking soda and drop it on from above. Anywhere you think snow should be piled, just pile it on. As long as you keep your drop direction mostly above, maybe a little angled if you want like blowing wind effect or something, it'll look natural. Once you think you got enough on there, you can go through and drench it in hairspray. It'll turn a little bit darker gray, but don't worry about that, it'll dry snow white. And spin it around, make sure there's no other spots you wanted to put some more. And if you add more, of course, add more hairspray on top of that. Set up your fan and give it about an hour. And there you go. Nice and snowy. I know you can't really see it very well here, so I'll uh, just do some pictures. So there you go, that's how you make um, Durin's Tower Diorama. Or anything else that you'd want to do in a sort of snowy kind of maybe frost grave or something like that. Pretty sure I already did this one, but this week's shout out is It's a Critical. His channel isn't so much crafting like mine, but he does a lot of um, 
like reviews and that kind of thing and uh, talks about game mechanics and does a lot of live streams. In fact, I am going to be live on his stream on Wednesday. So if you haven't already, definitely go check out It's Critical. Hopefully I'll catch you guys over there on Wednesday. If not, you can watch the restream. But of course, as always, thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.